Hey, good morning from the shop, guys. I posted that video on my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder a few weeks ago, and it uh, was a lot more popular than I thought it was going to be. So to everybody that joined the channel based on that video, welcome. I really did not expect it to get that popular. But because it was so popular, I decided that, that I would answer the most common questions I was getting about it. So you don't have to go through all the comments just to find the same answer repeated over and over again. But also, I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that even though I really am in love with this RV, it is not a perfect RV. In fact, I did put a list together about things that I've noticed about it or already knew about it that need to be addressed before I'd even feel comfortable going full-time in it. So I don't want to give the impression that this thing was perfect and flawless and there's nothing that I had to do on it. It's just that it was in an exceptionally wonderful condition that I would have been a fool not to get it at its price point. But let's go ahead and get this thing pulled out so we can go over it a little bit better so I can tell you what I've found wrong that needs to be done on it. Which of course leads me to the first problem that just happened two days ago. Which is right here. It won't start from the ignition. Which I was a little surprised about. Because and I didn't do a lot of troubleshooting on it, but the good news is this. At least with the key in the on position. I can put this on rear start and start it from there at least. So let me get this thing pulled out. So I'm pretty sure it's just an ignition switch. It's uh, 20 some odd years old, it looks like the original one, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, it does seem to be intermittent, getting in and out. I thought it would be fair and fun to let you know that even my RV has issues with it, so don't feel bad if uh, yours has issues too, especially if you just bought one. But let's go through this list real fast. We probably won't do any repairs on it, but i just let you to be aware of what I found wrong with it so far. And some of them are pretty common on beavers, so if you are shopping around for beavers, this would be a good thing to look for. Now, one of the things I showed on the last video were the rear clearance lights. They are all cracked. That's just plastic fatigue over time. So it, they are likely leaking water into the rear cap closet area. So they are a little bit higher on my to-do list than anything else. But also on the roof is going to be this skylight, which is number one on my list because it's definitely broken and it was leaking when I was power washing it. I could see it. And I think it's been doing that for a while. The previous owner did a little bit of touch-up repairs right here, but that's always been on my list. I also have a few front clearance lights that are kind of doing the same thing. Not high on my list is I don't really like the look of the peeling cap on this, so I would like that painted. And my wind sensor I could replace, but I, I'm very doubtful about how useful that's going to be. I do have a replacement one I could put on, but like I said, they tend to break. Uh, I know I got a lot of feedback from some people that said, no, my wind sensor's still good, but I, I just know the second I change it out, it's gonna break. So I'm, I'm hesitant on that one. Now also on the rear cap, the clear is also peeling. There's a little bit of spider cracking on the fiberglass itself up there and over here on the ladder. There is also a little bit of damage on the rear cap by the ladder right here. And obviously some paint peeling on the aluminum. Stuff like that I'm not too vitally concerned about. Again, this is just my experience and my opinion, but having a little bit of defects in your paint and in your body work may go a long ways to your mental uh, sanity. Because if it's, if it's pristine, you will be concerned about somebody scratching it or damaging it yourself. You can throw off and ruin an entire trip because you caused a little bit of scratch or dent damage on an RV. And if you already have a little bit there and established, it's not nearly as difficult for your mind to, uh, to accept that kind of damage. Now one of the last kind of cosmetic issues is going to be this insert. It's a black vinyl insert that goes on the molding right here. As I was washing it, this was popping out too. So I'll probably want to replace this. The good news is, I think I already have a roll of it right in here to replace it. So it's on my list of things to do. It's just not really high on my list. So that was most of the exterior cosmetic kind of issues that you might find on an RV that you're buying that was on mine. So those aren't very big deals. The next one, if you were a keen viewer on that video, you might've spotted it right about there. So first off, my slide out seal 
is loose and falling off. So that's an important one to get done. Uh, white ones aren't generally available too much anymore. I don't really like them anyways because they're not too protected from UV and tend to crack a lot more. But also, I don't know if you notice right here, I'm definitely off level. Let me run the slide out room out and you'll see what I'm talking about. So obviously you can see the slide out seal is pretty loose about halfway up. The good news is there's no topper on this, which I pointed out in the last video. So replacing it's just gonna be a little bit of a tedious act of cleaning off all the old adhesive using um, adhesion promoter and then putting on the new seal. So that's not too big of a deal. But if we look underneath right here, that alignment issue is causing some problems down here. Because the uh, slide out's a little bit too low. I'm gonna have to adjust this slide out a little bit because it's ripping off this bottom seal and threshold. And while you can see that roller there, that's not gonna be the main adjustment because the slide out compartment guides on this support down here the arm that supports the entire slide out is kind of hard bolted behind the carpet right here it's kind of hard to see that there's bolts right there so this carpet has to hold down then i'll have to readjust the entire slide out uh, now generally that's just a matter of uh i wouldn't call it frame fatigue just uh frame uh, relaxing or stretching a little bit over time Obviously the slide works just fine. I just don't feel comfortable with having it out of alignment, maybe causing some damage on the inside too. I haven't found any yet, but maybe. Also, this is uh, another issue. These door struts are pretty weak on this door. And although the entry door does not have a power lock actuator for locking the door, all the compartment doors do have power locks controlled by a switch right here. But this front power door lock isn't working and it's intermittent on the rest of them. Again, not a really vital one, but I'm thinking about upgrading to a remote fob anyway, so we'll save that for later. All right, now while we're on this side, might as well look at this door right here. I did the hard sell on my sewer hookup, which I do like, but these doors right here that come with that sewer hose, I'm not a big fan of them. This one keeps falling apart and falling off like that. So I wanna come up with some better solution on that one. Uh, I also need to label these valves so I know what they are. The previous owner did all this, and that was the uh, next thing on his list to do, but he didn't get to it before he sold it. So past here on the side discharge radiator, this grill is just a little bit loose and it does rattle driving down the road or when the engine's running, so I'd like to get that done. The exhaust chrome tip, I don't know if you can see the holes right there. Can you see the holes in it? So I could replace that, but it seems like a lot of work just for something that's kind of not important. So I'll likely just cut that part out because it's already been smashed a little bit. If I put a new one on, I'll likely smash the new one. And then I talked a pretty good game about Beaver's build quality, but over on this side, there is a little bit of an issue because of their build. Uh, this is the air intake for the engine. And this wall is actually a little bit rotten right here. If you can see the belt line sealant is cracked. I can push on the wall right here. I did actually have to already secure this rear molding and this belt line molding because the whole thing was kind of loose. And that's because of how Beaver did this air intake. If I take this off, I'm sure most roofers or contractors would point out there's a counter flashing issue on the inside here. So it's just a decorative grill covering everything. Look at it. Uh, this pan right here for the air intake, it does have a drain hole in it at the bottom but if water is coming right here from rain, there's like no counter flashing or no flashing right there to keep water from getting in between here and the sidewall. So if I pull that up, you can see, can you see? There's some rot in there. So again, not very high on my list of things to do because the damage is already done. I'm definitely not going to like cut this out and repair the uh, Luan that's behind here or the wood that's behind there because that's a lot of work for no real gain. I will likely just try to put something in there to secure it down, glue it back down, and then just use a uh, counter flashing right there to prevent damage down the road. The payback on cutting any of this out and trying to re-laminate this wall is nil, zero. It has no, no added value. The gel coat fiberglass on the outside is still in good condition. So to try to cut and seam fiberglass in right here and fix all the paintwork, especially around the Thunder decal and the paint, uh, Beaver decal, there's no real value to doing that. So one of the last few issues on the outside is gonna be the dash AC stopped working on me. 
I think it's an electrical issue because I did charge it back up and it worked for a little bit and then it just stopped working and the compressor clutch stopped working. Now again, my apologies to Beaver. This is 2001, so accessibility wasn't high on their list of things to do. You can get to the AC ports just fine right here, but I wasn't getting any power to the AC clutch. Oh, look at that. I think I just troubleshot it. Who says making videos doesn't solve problems? So it looks like that connection just burned a little bit. Let me uh, connect this and see if this fixes the problem. Hey, 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 look at that. It's spinning. And I know you guys can't feel the air, but it is really cold. So that's both good and a little bit bad because I didn't have any dash AC driving up to Las Vegas, so I ran the generator the whole time for the roof ACs to work. Which, of course, that did hold up, but that's not fair. Well, I guess we solved that problem. That was unexpected. I had expected to kind of point out Beaver's design choice on the front dash AC controls underneath and their bad access to it and to highlight something about it I didn't really like especially as a technician but then we fixed it on accident but I can go ahead and show you guys anyways uh, as a technician it always kind of bothered that Beaver didn't add a generator slide on the front or a front cap that slid out or even a opening on the front cap so you have to do everything from underneath it's a very tight squeeze underneath there's a condenser fan there's the resistor for the blower but the dash ac plenum is way up there so you have to or you can remove the dash and there's an access panel under the dash but you take those defroster vents off take a couple of these one two three screws out this whole part comes out there should be an access panel right in there but this is fabric and you always risk the screw gun falling off and poking a hole in it you know i know that really the last real item on the outside it really isn't on the outside it's in the basement i did talk about the wonders of the fresh water tank and the uh electronic monitor panel if i go to the fresh tank it reads 74 percent or 60 sec or 76 gallon now i've been having some problems with the accuracy of it and i don't trust it but there's a transducer pressure transducer right there works very similar to the aladdin system and even current silver release systems can use that model or that type of transducer but i think that one's bad which also means i think the probably the wastewater tanks the gray and black ones are probably bad too so again not high in the list of things i want to replace or worry about because i can visually check the tank if i need to but that's pretty much everything on the exterior we'll go inside real fast one of the common questions i got was there's no way the upholstery is the original upholstery with 160 some odd thousand miles on it now on youtube a uh, secret to know is that even with high resolution cameras Things really look better on video than they probably do unless you get a camera really close up to it. So there is some damage to the passenger seat right here. Uh, it looks like cat damage to me. You'll see it right there too. But also on this passenger seat, the uh, power footrest doesn't work. I did note that at the time of uh, my inspection, so that was not uncommon. The driver's seat, surprisingly, doesn't have as much damage to it. There's a little bit of scratch marks in it. But this is the original fabric, even has uh, the embroidery, like I said. So it's gonna be hard to find that. And you can see the damage here, which does bring me to the next problem that I didn't really point out. This little hole right there, that's from the slide out. When the slide out room's all the way back. On this recliner, I think this one's original too. It does have damage to it. You can kind of see it on the armrest mostly. It is dirty, it probably needs a good scrubbing. But other than that, I, I mean, it's kind of, pretty impressive that it's held up to that kind of use for 20 years and all them miles worst ones is actually the dinette seats and these are original and these are made by beaver themselves and upholstered and you can kind of see the probable cat damage to it that's what i would guess now one of the things i kind of liked about freestanding dinettes is that you can just go get replacement chairs really easily but i've started to have a change of thought when it comes to these seats and I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older. Uh, you can kind of see the damage here too. Because these are the original seats, I kind of do want to take them to an upholster and get them, uh, and get them recovered. 
they do match the table, they do match the wood, and I think they're actually pretty comfortable seats too. So I haven't decided yet on that, what I'm going to do, but there there is definitely wear to the, the fabric here. But surprisingly, the sofa has the least amount of wear to it, and you'd think that would have the most amount of wear. I can tell you when it comes to turning it into a bed, it's not extremely comfortable, mostly because of this seam right there is about where you would lay. So you'd have to put a foam topper on there if you are going to, I guess, sleep long term. But besides some damage to the actual chair upholstery, the only real damage to the rest of the upholstery that's inside on the walls or on the valances that's not dirt is back here in the bedroom. So this valance right here, see a lot of uh, loose strings on it. I think that looks like cat damage to me. It could be pins. People were putting pins in the valances right there, but I think that's cat damage. Now this day night shade is original and in pretty good shape. Don't worry about those wrinkles I just put in it. But the one above the bed, you can see this broken string is broken. Now I can restring this as I know how to do that, but I haven't found a need to yet because I always keep this one closed anyways. But this does lead me to one of the other problems. This does have CG windows on it, and CG windows are on a number of different RVs, but definitely on Beaver, and they have what's known as seal creep. So that's the actual sail between the two panes of glass, because it is dual pane, and it does start to move in the heat. So besides that window right there, the dinette window also has a little bit of seal creep you can see right here too. Now this is mostly just a cosmetic issue. It can cause a seal issue where you can get uh, moisture in between the glass. I don't have any fogging going on currently, so it's not high on my list of things to do where you can actually reglaze these windows. There's a number of services now out there. They, they can do that, so you don't have to replace the entire window. But before we get too far removed from fabric issues, I do love this ceiling right here. This is a padded vinyl ceiling, but what's really common, Beaver did not use a very good adhesive for installing this headliner to the ceiling to the wood underneath. And so it's hard to see, but this whole thing is loose. It's gonna be most notable right above the slide out right here because there is a big dro droop right here. And so it's very loose. Now this is not indicative of a water issue or a water damage. This is just uh, the wrong adhesive was used or they didn't use enough of it. Even when they were brand new, there was issues of this having coming loose. So you can see that better. Now, of course, that being said, we did know that the skylight does have a leak. And so there is a little bit of more damage right here to the material. You can kind of see where the wood blood, where the wood's bleeding through from the leak. And this isn't necessarily indicative of a water leak. It's just wood exposed to sun like this is gonna have some issues. Now, while we're talking about the fabrics, I did take off the plastic that was on the carpet itself because I, like a number of viewers, was concerned that the sticky part of the plastic would eventually get stuck to the, the carpet and then cause problems over time. It didn't, it's not sticky, so I'm happy about that. But as I pulled it up right here, the sculptured carpet at that seam right there is loose. So I do need to address that. Now, the only other real cosmetic damages that I see uh, that I will notate is there is one broken tile right here in the hallway, which again, is not very uncommon. Uh, especially on the, this era RV, not just Beaver, but Fleetwood uh, and Monaco. Usually right here at the threshold in the hallway, it would crack there somewhere to the point where they just put a grout line in right there anyways. Uh, a few other things inside. Mechanically, this fantastic vent, old style power lift mechanism needs to be replaced. One right there to replace it with. And I know I um, should know better as a technician. This is the original LP detector. And these go uh, obsolete after five years. So that one's, oh, I don't know, 15 years past due. Along with the CO detector in the ceiling right here. Beaver and Safari did put these in the ceiling. It's very irritating if you're an owner because this green light's on all the time in the middle of the night. Uh, Monaco kind of did the same thing. So most people... It's not uncommon to see a piece of black electrical tape right over that hole. So those are probably more important to do. The smoke alarm right here is still good and it does work, uh, but safety is kind of important. So that's a little bit higher on my, on my list of things to do. Now the last few things that are on my list of re needed repairs, one really have that should be addressed gonna be with this toilet right here. 
Now I will warn you guys, you may not want to watch this part. I can describe it to you. Uh, when the previous owner went ahead and uh, I guess either switched out the toilet or did some repairs to the toilet, he used a an oversized foam residential wax seal for a residential toilet, not for an RV toilet where the toilet mounts to the ground. I did note it at the time of my inspection, but let's see if we can't take a look inside. So this, I'm gonna open up the toilet right here. Now that oversized foam seal creates a ledge that will uh, trap items on it. So I do need to take that out and put the proper sized foam seal back in there. That's a simple one though. And we're really nearing the end of the list. Oh, the dash radio, I only have uh, volume from one speaker, which is gonna be right there. So I haven't troubleshot that one. The home theater system right here, which, which is a very nice surround sound system that he put in. It does say it has Bluetooth. I haven't figured out how to do the Bluetooth on that yet either, but I'm quite stubborn and I don't read directions very often. Now the last few items on my list really aren't anything that's broken or items that have failed. They're just items that I don't like. Now the first one's right above my head, this AC plenum. The previous owner went ahead and installed this because that's all he could get at the time when he changed out the roof AC. Now, like I pointed out in that video, he changed it from a Penguin roof AC to a heat pump. All that means is that it's not just an AC, it can actually make heat. Uh, that's usually about a $600 upgrade. So not all ACs are going to be heat pumps, but all heat pumps will be AC. So uh, like I said, it was a really nice upgrade he gave me. But this has a quick cool feature on this plenum. And the way this AC is ducted, that's not going to work. So it, uh, this one kind of bothers me in that sense. Back here in the bathroom area, we have two faucets. They're uh, brass double handle or dual handle and one right here. Uh, I'm not, it's not the brass that's bothering me. It's the handles themselves. I didn't notice it because uh, I don't normally live in these things. Is after you wash your hands uh, and your hands are all wet and soapy, there's not a lot of um, traction to grab on these handles and they, your, your hands just kind of spin on it. So I don't like that aspect. I also don't like dual handle setups on a RV bathroom sink or even a galley sink because it does tend to waste water as you're mixing hot and cold to get the right temperature and turn it off each time. So I do like single handles. Strangely enough though, I've been looking around a lot of the home stores and even the RV suppliers and they do still have some brass faucets that would look fine, but they don't have any single handle faucets. Even uh, the big box stores on the, on the chrome or even the brushed, uh, or the brushed chrome ones or the brushed stainless steel ones, there's a lot of dual handles, very few single handles right now. So I don't know if it's a supply chain issue, but I'd really like to go with a single handle if I'm gonna change out these faucets. Otherwise I would just change out the handles. Kind of the last one on my list of things I definitely wanna do, and it's actually pretty high on my list, is right here at the dash. This backup camera isn't the one that came with it. This is a wireless one, you can see with the antenna, and it's an analog wireless one. So the screen cuts in and out and it doesn't refresh very well. It's a very, very low quality resolution to it. It has horrible night vision on it too. So at the very least, I'd like to upgrade this to the Furion digital one. The digital backup cameras, really beautiful screen, uh, picture quality. I've never had any cutout, so I'd probably wanna do that. And then I'm thinking about putting the side cameras on on that option too, so. That one's probably pretty high on my list because I do like to see behind me when you're driving. And then lastly, we'll get all back on the roof right here. I would like to add some more solar up here. I know some people asked about solar. Uh, there's enough uh, room up here to at least add one more panel, if not two more panels. So that was the walkthrough of everything that was wrong with my RV or I found wrong with my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that it wasn't as pristine as maybe you might got the impression that it was. It is very, very nice. But I know the number one question, because I've seen the comments on YouTube, is how much did it cost? Now, as a general rule when I do these videos, I don't normally talk pricing about uh, the cost of RVs or the cost of repairs, just because it's not always uh, my business to share with everybody, everybody else. I know it's uh, usually one of the first questions I always ask, but I don't ever feel right sharing other people's financial information. But in this situation, it was all me. I paid for it and uh, I am not a salesman. I can only go based on what I thought it was worth. The book on this one was $64,000, which was high book. Now, of course, book is not set by me. That's set by the industry itself so that banks know how much they'll, they'll be willing to loan on something like this. Uh, but 64,000 is what it booked at on high with lower mileage and obviously this uh, 160 some odd thousand miles on it is not lower miles. 
but because you guys asked nicely and repeatedly and i think it's my place to let you know because it was such a very popular video so if you are going to be looking at a beaver should be i guess have an idea what to spend on something i ended up spending sixty seven thousand dollars on this uh, i thought it was an exceptionally great value still i bought a private party so it did help me quite a bit not having to pay the sales st uh, sales state tax on it but I think I still got an incredible deal. Uh, the previous owner was happy to, that I was getting it, so I think that was part of the uh, reason why he, he went with it. Um, but that's what I paid for it. I let you guys decide in the comments whether that was too much or not enough or just right. I feel pretty good about it, and at the end of the day, that was really what, what matters. Thanks a lot for watching this, guys. I hope that answered all the questions you might have had. Uh, giving you some food for thought if you're going to buy one of these or a used RV, what to look for, especially on these beavers. But I hope you also understand that it was not pristine. There were some issues with it, and there still are. But overall, I'm really so happy with this RV and was really happy to share it with you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And no, yes, I still have a chassis battery draw on this. But currently, as per my last video, I'm just taking out the negative battery cable off the chassis battery until I get this situated. But ultimately, it's not a bad list. Another surprisingly common question was on the washer dryer right here. This is a washer dryer combination, so it's both a washer and a dryer goes straight from wash to dry. This is the really old school, all mechanical Splendid, and it actually still works, both wash and dry function. The mechanical ones like this are almost bulletproof, it seems like. They're not the greatest dryer on the market, but they are better than going to the laundromat. Oversized residential foam, <clears throat> foam, toilets, <clears throat> an oversized foam waxy, an oversized foam residential wax seal for a residential toilet not for an rv toilet where the toilet mounts to the ground 